Tony. All right, y'all, here it is. It's time to get real in what I call the most revolutionary chicken and compost producing method on the planet. Now, right off the bat, it does take considerably more work, but if you want if you want this quality stuff, you'll find out that no matter what it is, whether it's your pigs, your chickens, whatever, the more holistic it becomes, nine times out of 10, it requires more out of you. And it's really not that much in the aggregate. All right, so this cage has been set up here for two weeks. Now, had it been meat birds, it'd be a little bit different. I'd have to make adjustments. But now what's gonna happen? Remember, we had our fence tripled up on itself when they were small to keep them from escaping. Now we're gonna take this cage we're going to take it off of here, move the chicken tractor that way, reassemble the cage, and then this pile, this we'll call it week one pile, is now going to be turned. It's going to be flipped. We'll explain more. But with that said, it's time to unravel this thing because it, you know, it gets a little tangled up when you do it this way. We'll unravel this net and give them just enough more. We won't go all the way out with it. We'll give them just enough because they're still small to do what they have, do what they need, give them grass, have room to turn this compost pile and set up the new cage. All right, so here we go. The fence is largely where I want the footprint to be. Now, as you can see, there's a great deal of growth down there. And so Michelle's gonna come by with a weed eater and just knock it down just enough because chickens don't like really high grass. So she's gonna knock it out just enough to keep our fence from grounding out too much and also to provide some, some means of access for the birds. Now, also what's gonna happen, we're gonna take this cage off, we're gonna reassemble it down there and we're gonna flip this compost going down hill. That's critical. So we'll get that done next. So the weed eating's done. And folks, it would have been better for all parties involved had we let our ruminants go through before like we did the last time. It just doesn't make sense right now because they're all the way over there. We would want them to go through and we would leave them a little bit longer because we're gonna want that grass low when these chickens are that small. Now the next step. Got the cage kind of sitting over there right now. This is their week one pile. We're gonna flip it, okay? And the chickens are all of a sudden going to become more interested, but we'll talk about that in the end. But the idea is we're going to flip this to right here. Now, we also had to take the chicken tractor a little further than we ordinarily would. It would typically go about a little bit, about one and a half times the length of that chicken tractor. Okay. We had to go a little bit for, more because in this terrain, we got bumps and humps. There was something of a very small cliff it had to go over. So it went a little further than it ordinarily would. With that said, it's time to flip. All right, y'all, this pile is being reassembled downhill, as you can tell. Um, and all their food scraps that they didn't eat, it's okay. When you're building that cage, it's all going to stack up. Remember, you got carbon at the bottom, then manure, carbon, manure. But in this system, we're going to basically start with a manure slash carbon layer all at the same time when we take that stuff out of the cage. Now, this is critical, and we're going to cover it more later. Remember before in that last video we did on the 18 day compost, I was looking at it. And if you let your peripheral vision go at it, you see all this life. Guess what that life is y'all. It's protein for these chickens. We're going to largely supply all of their carbohydrate needs down there in their daily cage. The protein they are going to extract out of here and they're going to figure it out in short order because it's already what chickens love to do. Now keep in mind with this pile, 
we saturate it even more than we would at 18 day and it's going to require more water now in our case we got water catchment on the barn runs down the hose and that's exactly what we're using to spray this down but depending on your weather conditions and depending on your understanding of compost remember this is why i said the 18 day it was good to kind of know have at least some basis of how to make compost because this stuff is going to be different it's not covered up by a tarp now there are some days when there are continuous rainy 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 days that we will cover it up that we don't want it to get too saturated but remember you're going to need a water source nearby you're going to have to spray it down and keep this rather wet because the chickens are going to get up in here once they figure out what it is they're going to scratch it all out during the day then in the evening when we go to pick them up we're just going to kind of bring the sides in let that go okay that's going to happen for a week now that this is done and saturated Let's talk about the composition of the new cage. All right, so compost is done, it's flipped. Now we're gonna reassemble the cage. Now typically, okay, a Jeff Lawton system, ordinarily you would take their bedding that's on the inside of that jack tractor, put it down, cover it up with manure, and then you put the food scraps on top. But because of the system we have, we had to invent a new way of doing it. So just like I showed you in the first one where it's a layer after layer after layer after layer after layer, it's like a lasagna. All we're going to do is take more of our carbon layer. We're going to first wet this down. That's why she's got the hose. We're going to wet this down and saturate it pretty good. Then we're going to take the carbon layer. And folks, for us, that means bedding out of the barn. For you, it could be leaves. It could be any number of things. It could be sawdust, whatever a good carbon source is for you. And you're going to layer it. So right now, we're not going to have much in here except for, okay, we're going to put that carbon. We're going to water it, put the carbon layer down. Then we're gonna get their bedding out, stick it in, and then we'll feed them. Then we'll talk about that. Yeah. Why are you? Why do you have a snicker on your face? Because I was gonna spray you while you were in here. <laughs> this is like a, an assault. You're spraying the wrong spot. Spray them. Keep coming closer. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> she likes it. You just like it, huh, Bubby? <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get a base layer in here but because we're on the hill we would always try to cheat it to the uphill side if we can like i said every day this we're just going to add more bedding not bedding but we're going to add more carbon every day so they'll get in here they'll eat they'll poop they'll do all the things they do and it's going to add some really nice nitrogen so let me get the other bag and michelle can keep spraying Hey, hey, <laughs> why are you messing around? All right, to get the bedding out, we got to get them out. So they're going to be wondering where the grub is. Because of their Pavlovian response to this cage and everything, they've been fed here for a while. They tra they're trained. So they're going to want to come in here, but they're wondering where their food is, which is cool. We're gonna take that bedding out of the tractor, get it, dump it in, and uh, then we'll put their food on top and then they're gonna to go to town. Now, all right, this is important, what you see right now. We haven't yet fed them. And they're already knowing exactly because they can see those little, the biota, the microorganisms in that pile. So you can look at them right now. This is exactly what you want. They are in there extracting their protein and that's where they're gonna get it. They're gonna scratch this out all day, even though, if you look down here, we don't have the food in here yet, but they know where to go to get. We're going to provide the carbohydrates largely in here. They are going to extract their protein in the form of biota out of this pile. And you can see them already doing it. We don't need, we found out that doing this system, when you use store-bought food, all of it's formulated, has exactly the right ratios of everything. Well, these guys already know better than you and I ever could exactly what they need and how much of it they need. So they will get all the protein they need out of here, all the carbs out of here, and they judge and decide how to do that. Now, if somebody's going to ask, do they have any problems? In all the times we've run this, especially with these uh, dual purpose birds, we've had zero problems in terms of growth, in terms of deformities, lack of this, lack of that. In fact, if you have layers in a system like this, they actually outperform the chickens that are giving feed on demand. Magnificent system. It's funny how just like that, they already went right to it. All right, we got this tarp back down in here. 
And all I'm gonna do is take this straw, this leftover straw we had up at the barn. Now it can be anything. You can use leaves, any carbon source you want. Just stick it down in there. Just try to make sure it's halfway clean. And all I'm gonna do is just kinda, let me throw some over to Michelle. And they are gonna lay on this and poop on it over the next week. All right, just a, just a little caution there. It's really not much of a caution, but when you put new bedding in here, the chickens, when they come in at night, they're gonna be kind of, it's, it's important that you do this in the morning because they, it gives them time to acclimate. But the first time you do this, you're gonna find out that there's, there's gonna be a little bit of hesitancy about coming back in, but they will. You may have to coach them along. And um, we already showed you how to do that part. So now that this, done, this is done, the bedding's in the cage, it's time to go feed them. All right, these guys are down there grubbing, but they see this red bucket. So a couple of them, I got their attention. Okay, so let's talk about what we're gonna feed them. This is where they eat every day. We got planks set up. That's really not necessary for these birds because they can fly over. They can do exactly what they want. But for meat birds, it might be a little more necessary. Now, what do I have here? In here is a bunch of romaine scrap, romaine lettuce heads that I, that I basically acquired from a restaurant in town okay and for a whole bunch of reasons they're going to remain nameless obviously there's some rubbish in there so we want to get that out and put it in here now things like this paper towels that's completely okay i'm going to leave it now what we have in this bucket is basically rice few beans and some corn chips and stuff and we're just going to put that in there you don't want to put it in one hump if you can help it for obvious reasons so they're not mobbing each other okay that's it now it is critical that you leave them until you have your first flip of that first compo compost pile it is absolutely critical that you leave them to some extent on their store-bought feed because it's not until they get that pile and they get this pile that they are able to fully make the transition over to this chicken tractor on steroid system because through there they're going to get all the protein they need out here they're going to get protein and carbs but it's also a balancing act you don't want to feed them so much here that they don't mess with your piles so yeah there is a certain there's a certain degree of um playing with this system that you're going to have to figure out but that's part of it too you, you know if you want really awesome compost you want chickens that you raise for free this is what you got to do so here we are. We got a couple of them that scattered on it, but by and large, most of them are totally digging that pile. Now, as they're going through there, they're taking out the biota, and at the same time, they're leaving, leaving their manure to keep that going. It is a magnificent system, folks. And as it unfolds, you'll understand that it wasn't hyperbole when I said last week this could feed the world because it can. This is why I want to evangelize this system as far and as wide and as often as I can to as many people as I can. Because at these times where food security is shaky at best, we could feed entire communities. This thing can be scaled up or down depending on your needs. Can't really scale down much lower in this system than 28 birds. But it can be scaled to fit your needs. We don't even have to get this stuff from the from the store. We have enough right here on this farm, and we're going to show you over the coming weeks how we don't even need to go to town and acquire this stuff. We can source every bit of it right here. So, folks, I hope you understand that I'm not overstating when I say the, the gravity of this system and what it could do, especially in these times. So evangelize this information. Let everybody you know know what we're doing here because they can replicate it and we'd be happy to help along the way. And many of you out there have demonstrated interest in wanting to replicate it. Let us know, give us your questions. We'll coach you in any way that we can, obviously long distance. So take this, spread it around. Remember, hit that notification bell, subscribe. Tell your friends about what we're doing. Till next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion because it is and this is a lot of the reasons why we'll see you next time